Welcome back to the channel. My name's Ned. This is my dog, Chai. And today we're going to be talking about Power BI's newest feature, Translytical Task Flows. At least I think I pronounced that right. But this feature is a big one. In my opinion, it's going to kill Microsoft Power Apps, and it's going to fundamentally change the way that we work with Power BI from this day forward. Now, there's been a few early videos on this feature because it's been out for a week, but I'm telling you right now, I want to make this a little bit of a series. This is a huge new feature, and I think we got to take it slow. So welcome to my first video, Translytical Task Flows, User-Defined Functions. What are they? Well, let's jump in. We're going to start somewhere where you might not expect, and that's PowerPoint. And we're going to first diagram out what exactly Translytical Task Flows are, at least from my understanding after reading about them. So we have Microsoft Power BI. Now this can be Power BI Desktop, or this could be Power BI Service. You then have a user-defined function, and these are functions that are written in, I believe, Python, right? So we have a user-defined function. And then we have, for example, something like a SQL database, okay? Or we have an API or whatever else we might want it to be. So right here, right, we can go and we can call this an API. So the way translatical task flows work is Microsoft Power BI or Power submits a request to a user-defined function right here. Those That user-defined function executes Python that can do SQL, it can query an API, so on and so forth. And on top of that, you can have this SQL, uh, right, be hooked up to a Microsoft Fabric data warehouse, right? So it could be right up here. And it can write back to Microsoft Power BI. So you have this whole circular motion going on. And that's what people are really most excited about and what they're talking about right now. But the big deal is that this user-defined function, because it's Python, it can do pretty much anything. And when you use a UDF in Microsoft Power BI, you're essentially just passing variables from the report to the Python function, and then the Python function is actually doing the interactivity. Now, when I saw this, my first thought wasn't actually right back, but rather, could I actually change the data source, a Power BI, report is referencing dynamically? I kind of think you can. Uh, and we'll get into that a little bit later on in the series. But my point being is that this is just not right back in Microsoft Power BI. This is something a lot bigger. This is a whole new set of functionality because, well, Python's a crazy language. So let's set up our first hello world translytical task function. And also, I'm still not totally 100% right on pronouncing that correctly. It's kind of like Asher, Azure, Asher, right? So, you know, I'm sure I'll hear Microsoft rep talk about it one time. But let's set up our first one. So here I am logged into a Microsoft Fabric trial capacity. And I've gone ahead and I've enabled the preview feature user data functions on this tenant. So I'm able to click right here, click new item, then search for function right here, and click user data function. I will ask me for a name. I'm going to give it a name of test, and it's going to create a standard user data function for me right on up. So I'm going to click right here, create new sample function, and hopefully any second now, it will load some code. And as you can see, what this does is it imports date time, imports fabric functions, imports logging, right? It declares that the UDF is a user data function, and then it defines a method here. And that method takes an input called name, that is a string, and it returns a string. So as you can see right here, it will log Python UDF, function triggered, and then it will return welcome to functions. It'll take that name variable from up here, pass it in right here, and then it will also take the date time now from date time. 
So this is a really simple function. When it's run, it'll essentially return the variable and say, hey, welcome to Fabric Functions at blah, blah, blah time. So that's the Python code behind just our absolutely basic starter function. How do we get it into Microsoft Power BI and talking to our report? Well, let's do that now because honestly, it's pretty slick. So here I am in an absolutely basic Power BI report that I created for my last video. There's actually almost no data in this except for a column with the number one in it. So it's pretty much the most basic of basic reports. I want to call that UDF that I just created. So I'm going to put in two visuals. The first is going to be a text slicer right here. And then the second is going to be a button. So I'm going to put this as my button. And I think that's pretty much all we need. Actually, I think I might have just put in a text box. So let's go back up to buttons and we'll put in a blank button. There we go. That's what I was looking for. So there is our blank button. We're now going to go over here to action on our button. We're going to expand it. We're going to turn the action on. Then on action, we're going to go all the way down to data function, our workspace. We're going to set the workspace where our function is. Our function type is going to be, or our function set is going to be the test function, right? Um, and then our function is going to be our hello world function. Now, as you can see, it takes an input of name and currently there's no name set except for this long gibberish ID right here. What is that ID you might be wondering? Well, that ID is the name of this text slicer that I just created over here. So if I title this text slicer, Ned's input, right? When I now go back over into that action section, I can now select Ned's input right here. And just like that, it will now take whatever text I type into this text slicer, pass it to the function when the button's clicked and move it all the way through. All right, you ready to test it? Hold your horses just one second. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. It would mean a lot to me and I would love to have you along for this journey as we continue to explore this new Power BI feature. All right, with that said, I made you wait enough. Let's go test it out. Here we are back in Power BI, typing in the input test, control clicking the button to invoke the function, and uh-oh, what's that? It's spinning. What is gonna happen next, we will see. I think what will happen is you'll see the Power BI report start to refresh. There we go. And then just like that, look, here is what we had our function return. Welcome to the Fabric Functions test at blank. Show details. And as you can see, it ran the data function, hello, Fabric. Now, this would look a little bit different if we were doing this in the Power BI service, but I wanted you to see that it does work in the Microsoft desktop environment. Let's just change that out just a little bit so you can see how this works one more time. So I'll type Jai is a fun husky. And I will control click. Now you might be noticing that this refreshes, right? And oh, there we go. This refreshes every single time that you hit that button. And that's important for that write back functionality, right? You want the data model to pick up on any new data. And in this case, I'm importing data. So that's a good introduction to this new feature of Power BI. Please consider subscribing. I'm going to be making a ton more videos on this. Also, I don't know if you noticed, but I've moved rooms. I've moved, consolidated my office down into what used to be our gym. So if you notice, there's some weights and a treadmill. So uh, bear with me as I figure out kind of this new setup. Uh, with that said, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a good night.